Hey there, my friends. I hope you all are doing well. For this adventure, I'm up here in the green forest. It has been months since I've been up this way. Due to a deep snowpack, I've been unable to come up to this area for a long time. Thankfully, the snow and the ice has been melting, so finally, we can enjoy this location. Everybody, I need to do some hiking before we get to the campsite. We'll do more talking soon. Everybody, let's hike. We have made it to the location that I'm going to set up camp at. This is such a beautiful spot. It's perfect. It's pretty much flat, which is really rare up here in the mountains. There's good tree placement here for a tarp, a relatively flat location for my tent. With this location here, it's really not optimal for a tent setup. It's actually quite sloped. It's good for a chair. It's not really good for a tent. Plus, there's quite a few rocks and roots on the ground here. So I'm going to set up the tarp here. I'm going to have my tent over here because it's quite a bit more level. I receive questions about that quite often. Why don't I put my tent underneath my tarp? Everything here in the mountains is sloped. There's roots and rocks everywhere. So oftentimes it simply doesn't work. It's just like in this situation here. I can have a tarp here, great. I could have my tent over there, fantastic. But there's really not enough space here to have them both together. It is what it is. Everybody, let's set up the tarp. Let's get to work.
As you all can see here, the tarp has been set up in a perfect shelf formation. This tarp is blocking all of the wind that is coming this direction. Speaking of the wind, it is actually quite breezy in the forest here. Outside of the forest, we're talking about 20, 25 miles an hour. Inside of the forest, quite a bit less. Winds around 10. Later on tonight, the winds are going to pick up big time. We're talking about winds over 45 miles per hour. So without a doubt, we need a tarp, we need protection. And now folks, we have it. As an update, everybody, it is now three o'clock. We are at 5,496 feet. The temperature is in the 30s and the winds have really picked up. Already it's getting quite gusty even inside of the forest here. That wind, it's cold. Luckily, the tarp is set up and it's offering a ton of protection. All I have left to do here in camp is basically set up the inside of the tent, sleeping pad, sleeping bag, and that's that. As you all saw, I inflated the sleeping pad, got the bag ready, the tent is ready to go. I'm sure this caught your attention. Recently, this was sent to me by a viewer. This is a product from Flex Tail, and it weighs 1.2 ounces.
just in case you don't know this, the key to using an alcohol stove successfully is all about controlling the flame, controlling the heat. You have to consider that these stoves are very easily influenced by the wind. And at the same time, they're really not putting out that much heat. So you really do have to focus that heat directly to your pot. If you don't do that, your cooking experience can take forever. And at the same time, you'll go through a ton of fuel. While we're making coffee, let's talk about this tent for a second. This is the Heleberg Octo. This is a one person tent, a four season tent, and this is the smallest four season tent that they make. I have owned this tent for a very long time, and unfortunately, I have to say, this is my least favorite Heleberg tent. It may look pretty good, pretty solid right now, but the thing is this. This tent is made with like a sill nylon, so the material it stretches really, really bad. We have one pole that goes across the body, and for the rest of the tent, it is simply staked out. So imagine that material stretches, right? Especially as it gets wet and because there's only one pole and no real structure to this tent that material just sags down on top of you at the same time ventilation is not too good so you have an issue with condensation in the end when it comes to four season tents from Heleberg this is without a doubt my least favorite Folks, this coffee is amazing. What I have here is a combination of Taster's Nasty. We have hazelnut with the house blend and a three-in-one coffee. So the hazelnut, that's the star. I promise you, everybody, go out, buy some hazelnut. The smell alone, it is incredible. Everything else that I add in here is just to make it more powerful. I'll tell you what folks, let's go over the forecast for tonight and tomorrow morning. So tonight, a chance of rain before midnight, then snow. Low around 16, windy. South winds 23 to 26 miles per hour, gusting as high as 41 miles an hour after midnight. The forecast for this elevation is roughly 4,000 feet. Again, we're about five and a half thousand feet. Snow accumulations, one to two inches. Chance of precipitation, 100%. Tomorrow morning, Winds up to 50 miles an hour. Snow showers in the morning, ending by nine. That, everybody, is what we're looking at with this trip. Is that going to happen? Don't ask me, I don't know. <laughs>
for dinner we have packet gourmet this is shepherd's <laughs> i can't see anything <laughs> shepherd's cottage pie okay so with this light that is the medium setting the low setting is too low for filming and the medium setting is too high i wonder if i can't diffuse this with like a paper towel or something let's give it a shot That, everyone, is a whole lot better. It's nice to be back at this campsite. I really do love it on top of this mountain. It's beautiful. It's amazing that winter is almost over. Unfortunately, this winter, it really hasn't been that cold. In fact, at Lone Wolf Mountain, I saw some briars that are growing already. At the house, there's grass beginning to grow in some places. It's crazy. In the end, I can't say it was a bad winter. We have had some snow. We had one good storm and that's better than nothing. I'll take what I can get. You never know. Winter's not over yet. We still have some time, but it's definitely on the way out. You never know. This might be the last snowfall. It's possible. Moment of truth time. Let's see how this meal is. Shepherd's pie. It is fantastic. Mm-hmm. This fire, everybody, feels incredible. We have heat reflecting off of this wall, off of the ceiling. It's super, super warm. <laughs> it's a little bit smoky too. This wood is soaking wet. You go back a few days ago and everything here was covered in snow. It's definitely dry enough to burn though. As far as the time goes, it's almost eight o'clock. The temperature is dropping, the humidity is going up, and the storm system is approaching. You all saw how easy it was for me to get this fire going. I got the dry materials, I made a nice nest, and then I poured a little bit of my alcohol right on top of it. Let it soak right into the wood, one match, and it was on. Then I took the air pump, that super small air pump, and I used that to kind of fan the flames. In other words, I put more oxygen into it. And now I have a nice warm fire. The easiest fire I've ever started. <laughs> I almost forgot to tell you all about a very cool experience that I had the other day. It was actually a couple weeks ago, but anyways. Susie and I, we were going to go to Florida. We woke up super early to get ready, and I was packing up the van around 4 a.m. As I stepped outside of the house, I had my headlamp, and I shined it past this bush that we have in the yard. And I scanned, and I was walking. Something caught my attention, and I turned back around 
point my flashlight, my headlamp at it, and it's this tiny owl that is sitting in this bush. And he just looked at me, I looked at him, and it was awesome. It was such a cool experience. He hung out, or she, hung out the entire time that I was loading up the van, getting coffee and all that stuff. Every time I would walk by, I'd stop, talk to it, <laughs> go inside, do what I needed to do, come back, talk to it, continue on. It was amazing. That little owl was just sitting there, just like it was meant for me, you know what I mean? Without a doubt, that's the coolest experience that I've had in a long time. That little owl would stare at me when I was talking to it, almost like it understood me. It was, it was really neat. It really was. <laughs> I did capture one picture, which I've probably shown you already. The worst picture ever taken. <laughs> Anyways, everybody, I'm going to sit around this fire for a while. Then I'm going to pack everything up and get ready for bed. I want to get inside of this tent before the rain and snow starts, whatever it may be. I mean, once it starts, it's not going to stop until morning. So I'd rather just be inside of the tent, get ready for it. That way I don't have to get anything wet. You know what I mean? I will see you all inside of the tent within the hour. It is now a little bit after nine o'clock. Temperature keeps dropping, humidity is going up. It is super windy and that means it's time for bed. <laughs> I'm gonna crawl inside of this and just try to stay warm. Again, by morning, it should be around 10 degrees. It will be interesting to see how much snow falls tonight. The big question is whether or not it's going to start off as rain or snow. The follow-up is that if it does start as rain, how long is it going to rain for? Those are the two factors that are going to determine how much snow we have in the morning. So, who knows? We shall see. Everybody, I'm going to bed. Thank you so much for joining me today. I've had a ton of fun. I hope you have too. I will see you all in a bit. Good morning, everyone. It is roughly 7.30. Last night, I slept great. I have to say, as far as the storm goes, the amount of snow, that's great. It is definitely cold, like really, really cold. More impressive than the cold last night was the wind. I would say around one o'clock in the morning, the winds picked up to be so strong. They were just raging through this forest, super, super strong. <laughs> My face is numb, it's cold. <laughs> but they were just raging through this forest. The winds were raging through this forest and I was concerned that trees would come down. Sorry if I'm slurring, my face is frozen. Folks, let's make some coffee. Let's get the day underway.
We cut that one close. This water bottle is on the way to freezing solid. Like I said, everybody, it is cold. Luckily, we have a lot of protection underneath this tarp. And let me tell you, this tarp is weighed down. There's a layer of ice on top of this. It's heavy, really heavy. The same applies for the tent. It is covered in ice. And again, I kind of mentioned some of the issues with this tent. The one that I forgot about, because I haven't used this in a while, is size. This tent is so small, I barely fit in it. I can barely get in it. As far as Healy's go, this is not the tent for me. I do not like it. Ah oh man, it's nice to be next to this little stove. It's putting off some heat. It feels incredible. That, my friends, is fantastic. It's almost just as nice to hold it as it is to drink it. For the most part, the snow's over. We got about an inch outside of the forest, inside of the forest, just a dusting. I don't think I mentioned this, but last night I lowered this tarp down. That way I didn't have to worry about snow and ice building on it and tearing it up. It's kind of funny, in the past I've made mistakes where I've left the tarp up, where it collected snow and ice. Only once have I had the tarp tear up. Every other time I've actually torn the trees out of the ground. There was one time I was doing a cowboy camp at Lone Wolf Mountain with a tarp and I left it up. An ice storm came in that night. During the course of the night, I hear a crash, and when I get up in the morning, it ripped one of the trees that the tarp was attached to out of the ground. Black locust is incredibly strong, but the root ball is really small, and so they come out of the ground rather easily. I learned a lesson that night. That tree could have landed on me. Do you all remember a few years back, we were camping here during the summertime. I was breaking down camp, and right in the middle of doing that, we had a white-tailed deer walk through the camp here, just right past us. Do you all remember that? That was so cool. <laughs> it's funny how like the smallest things are like the things that you remember, like a deer coming through camp. I don't remember anything else about that trip <laughs> other than that. As far as the time goes, it is now 8 o'clock. I'm going to wrap up the coffee, break down camp, because it's time to go. Good grief. This is just about frozen. That's after about 15 minutes being outside.
kind of funny folks there's so much ice on the tarp and the tent i've easily added 20 pounds to my backpack this thing is super super heavy <laughs> i'm all packed up ready to go i want to thank you very much for joining me for this trip this was a ton of fun everybody be safe out there take care of yourselves i'll see you next week strength and honor bye for now <laughs>